it's Brandon here at Artismia, and in this video we're going to create a special effect using Procreate Dream. Step 1. Using a tripod, record a video of yourself or an actor jumping. And be sure to get a few moments of footage of only the background. Next, open the Dreams app, create a new movie project, and choose your preferred settings. I'll be using 4K at 24 frames per second, which you may want to reduce depending on your desired outcome and how much work you want to do. Now tap the plus button on the right, select video, and import your video footage. If you need to adjust the duration of your movie project, tap the name of the project on the left and then tap Properties. Here you can adjust the duration of your project as needed. Next, position the playhead at the exact moment your actor jumps and is almost off of the ground. Split the video at that exact moment. Then position the playhead on the frame where your actor first makes contact with the ground after being airborne and split the clip again. Delete the footage in between those two moments. Now find a few moments of footage of only the background with no visible actor. Split that clip and reposition it in between the jumping and landing clips. We will need a few moments of time in between the jump and the landing. Now this is dependent upon what you want to have happen. I want to have the actor fly straight up into the air and fly across the screen from right to left. You have a few options here. You can duplicate the background video a few times as needed to create the additional length and time needed. Or add a screen capture still frame of the background. To do that, return to your video footage in the Photos app. Adjust the playhead to a frame of footage of just the background and take a screenshot. Crop it as accurately as possible and save it to your preferred location. Return to the Dreams app, tap the plus button, select photos and import your screenshot as a new track. Using a red dot in the corner, resize the background image to fill the stage. You can hold your finger on the screen while you enlarge it to constrain the image to center preventing it from moving. Adjust the background clip on its track or move it in between the jumping and landing clips. Next, since we don't have a selection tool yet in Dreams, we need to create a still frame cutout of our actor in mid-flight. We can use the automatic sticker creator feature included in the Photos app. While in the Photos app, pause and adjust the playhead to the exact frame of flight you want to use. Press and long hold on the actor. The app will automatically select and cut out a sticker of your actor removing the background. Continue to press and hold the newly selected image. You can now switch from Photos to the Dreams app while holding the image and then it will automatically import it onto its own new track. Once imported, you'll need to resize and reposition the cutout at the starting point of the actor jumping on the main stage. Now be sure to position the actor cutout clip on the timeline track so that it lines up with the moment of the jump. You can now use two keyframes to create the animated movement of your actor taking flight. Use the action playhead button to add a starting keyframe. Then move to the end of your clip and add an ending keyframe. The first keyframe is in position 1 of the initial jump and the last keyframe is in position 2 where the cutout sticker is off the stage or above the screen. Your other option to create the animated movement is to use record mode. Here you can enter record movement mode and drag and drop the layer from point A to point B, and the app will generate tween frames automatically for you. Now this record feature is advantageous and useful, but you still may need to adjust the keyframes to make the movement look more pleasing or chaotic depending on what your expectations are. Reposition or delete the automatically generated keyframes to adjust the timing and rate of travel. Depending on how fast you want your cutout layer to move will determine how close or how far apart your keyframe should be. Next, split the cutout still frame on the timeline just after it flies off screen. Tap the action playhead button, select edit, and then tap split. This will create a new clip that you can modify and adjust without affecting the previous clips. Shift the clip on the right to the right, creating a gap between the two clips, and a few moments of time with the actor off stage. You can adjust the timing gap based on what looks right to you. Reposition, move, and adjust the still frame cutout of the actor off stage. Determine the flight path you want your actor to follow, from right to left or left to right. Now using the corner angle adjustment dial, the small arch in the corner, change the angle of the actor from vertical to horizontal, making it look like it is flying parallel with the horizon. Create a new animated movement using keyframes or record mode. Drag the still frame cutout from left to right or right to left depending on what you want. Adjust the action playhead button to the right of the last frame and split the clip. 
Press and hold the clip to access the pop-up window where you can cut, copy, and duplicate. Tap Delete Content to remove the additional unneeded clip. Now on the timeline, return to the first clip of the vertical cutout still frame. Tap and hold and then drag it to a new track above. Tap and hold the clip again to access the pop-up window and duplicate the clip. Moving it to a different track before duplicating it prevents it from moving the other clips on the timeline which could negatively affect the timing and placement of those other clips. The objective is to make it look like the actor is returning to the ground, so you will need to resize and reposition the actor cutout on the stage so that it lines up with the footage of the actor below. Basically repeating the same process and flight path we just did, but this time in reverse. You could use the record movement button or just add keyframes to animate the return movement of the actor to the ground, creating the illusion of a perfect landing. Be sure to line up the last frame of the return flight clip with the first frame of the landing clip on the timeline track. It may take a few adjustments to get it to line up accurately. And if you want perfection, use a different still frame capture cutout of that exact frame from the original footage by returning to the Photos app and selecting another sticker cutout, just like we did previously. Adjust the keyframe timing by bringing them closer together to speed it up, or move them apart to slow it down. You may want to add a warp effect to the still frame image of the actor to simulate subtle movement when it is flying. To do so, adjust the action playhead to the start of the clip. Tap the action playhead button and select warp from the move and scale menu. Here you can adjust control points and add keyframes to make it look like it is wiggling or moving in the wind. Now that we have created the basic flight paths and movement of the video effect, it is time to add the additional elements of clouds, dust, and flames. Now there are so many different options for creating this effect that we could use hand-drawn frame by frame, we could import photo elements from the internet, or even use Procreate to draw all the layers. To do it entirely in the Dreams app, tap the plus button to create a new track. Enter draw in paint mode by tapping the squiggle button. Draw frame by frame simple clouds or popcorn shapes to represent the cloud of dust, smoke, and vapor from the explosion of rocket fuel. If you have not seen the previous video about animating explosions, you may want to watch that for more information about creating the illusion of an explosion. Here you can see I am using frame by frame to draw on a single layer, simple overlapping circles and ovals using only two to three colors and a basic black outline. Again, the level of detail is dependent upon what your desired results or expectations are. As I progress from one frame to another, I manually adjust the size and opacity of the brushes being used to create the illusion of the cloud expanding as it grows. With each frame, I follow the path of the actor as it takes flight, revealing more flames and clouds. It is helpful to observe photo references or videos of rockets taking off to see what the clouds and flames might look like. Once you have a few frames of flames and clouds created, you could return to the timeline and duplicate those frames. Then resize, move, and adjust those elements, even adding keyframes to create tweening movements. Once duplicated, you can enter draw and paint mode again to add additional bubbles, puffs of smoke, clouds, and flames, saving you from having to hand draw everything over and over again. Now if you're not really comfortable with hand drawing each shape on each frame, you could use the multitude of brushes and textures available in the brushes collection to create what you think looks best. Or you could even find images on web searches and use them as overlay cutouts. At some point, as the clouds and flame expand, the cloud will need to break up or break apart. As explained in the previous explosion video, working frame by frame and duplicating the work you have already done, you can begin to erase parts of the cloud shape revealing more of the flames and the background. By simply using the eraser tool, you can add holes and smaller shapes to create the animated illusion. You may also find using move and scale on the timeline works well. Again, it is very helpful to reference other photos or videos as you go. To add the glowing flames effect, you can use the light pen or light brush from the Luminance brush collection. Here you can see once I realized that I liked the look of that, I had to backtrack each frame to add the additional glow.
Now, traditional animation has always been about drawing frame by frame using onion skins and transparent overlays, as I'm doing now. But it is actually better to make every element of your animation separate from each other, keeping each layer on its own track. So what I should have done here to make this animated video effect better and easier was to keep the flame and the clouds on their own tracks, which would have made it much easier to add that glowing effect. But since I failed to do that, I must now continue to duplicate the frames and erase all of the clouds of smoke until I am left with only a layer of flames. With all the remaining clouds of smoke elements now erased and removed, it is time to create the illusion of the flames continuing to move off stage. Here I continue to duplicate the frame of the flame element and add the additional illusion of movement or flickering by tapping the three dot menu button in the top right corner of the boundary box. This provides the option to flip the object horizontally or vertically or to edit the anchor point. Now by tapping flip horizontal every other frame, you can create a flicker illusion on playback. To watch the animation in full screen mode, tap with four fingers anywhere on the stage. All right, now we need to do the, we're gonna duplicate this one here. So what we're gonna do is gonna, gonna bring it down to the one track below. I'm gonna duplicate on it because I don't wanna shift, I don't wanna shift any of those over. So I'm gonna put this one back. I wanna take this one. I'm gonna move it over to here. Now we've done all the work now, which is great. And We've got the new guy going to fly across. So here, I'm going to find right here. Okay, right there's where I want to start my new layer of flames. Okay, so I'm going to go back into drawing paint mode. I'm going to erase everything, all these little specs because we don't need them. Now, what we want to do is give the illusion of a flicker, which we could have, which needed to do that in the previous ones, but when you're done on that, we're going to now take this one. I'm going to rotate. Let's go back into drawing paint mode and erase some more. Go back out to here. I'm going to rotate some more. Get it so that we're lined up. Okay, we're going to track across here. We should be able to extend this. Which we did. We're going to start on this location here. So we want to add a keyframe. We're going to move across. Extend this out. And we're going to need the keyframe there. Straight across. Like so. And the tracking motion is a little bit off, so yeah, just a little off. Double tap, double tap, reposition. And we're off the screen. So we're gonna preview that. Now we could add some kind of flicker to this. So let's go into here. We're gonna add is it a filter? Noise, blur. We could add a blur. Warp. So from here. I want to add. Okay, so add just a little bit more of an illusion here. Let's take and split the clip there. We'll take and split the clip here. We'll take and split the clip here. Just random locations. Then I'm gonna come back into this clip and alter the end of it here, just to give it some alters. Yeah, go back to the luminance brush. So now we go from here and the flickers there. Let's split it again. Take this one. Reduce it. Change it. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, just smearing it out. Gives it that extra blur. As I said before, there are many options available to create this animated effect. And while the Dreams app is pretty awesome, it is lacking many of the features found in the Procreate app. So if you have the Procreate app, you may find it easier to create all the elements there and then just drag, drop and modify in Dreams. One final touch before exporting and sharing your creation would be to add sound effects to your project. I find that a quick search on pixabay.com is a great source of royalty-free sound effects that work really well. Once downloaded, return to Dreams app. Tap the plus button to add a new track. This new track will be your audio track. Then tap Files to access your download folder. Import the sound effect onto the new track. By creating the separate track first, you avoid importing the sound onto your already completed work, which could accidentally cause everything to shift off of the timeline. When you are ready to share your movie, tap the name of your project, tap Share, and then tap Video. 
If you've been following along and you decide to share your work, either here on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, be sure to tag me and let me know so I can see your work. Also, do not hesitate to leave comments or questions in the comments section below. If you're new here and you haven't seen any of my previous videos, then you definitely should go check those out. Click that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss what I do next, as I'll be making more videos just like this one. This is Brandon from Artismia. Keep practicing, and we'll see you next time.